You know what? It's a handheld. What if you, oh, okay. Yeah. It's tricky, yeah. your jacket in the mud room aren't those your shoes there by the door you never left the house without them now you don't need to aren't those your keys there on the table they've gone everywhere you go they opened every door you Every engine on I'd run those keys out to the driveway. Joke that you wouldn't have gone far. And now you're further than you've ever been from me. Than you've ever been from me. And like a song, I can see you, but you move me just the same like the radio waves all through the air you invisibly make it okay like the moon i can't touch you but you pull me just the same and like the crashing of waves all through the ocean i rise and i fall in your name all in your name you say at first the pain is piercing an angry bee inside your chest but it can't sting like that forever and even heartbreak takes a rest they say just like a sword in battle, a sharpened blade will slowly dull. With every thought inside my mind that you possess, it'll hurt a little less. And like a song, I can't see you, but you move me just the same. Like the radio waves all through the air, you invisibly make it okay. Like the moon, I can touch you, but you pull me just the same. And like the crashing of waves all through the ocean, I rise and I fall in your name, all in 
you move me just the same like the radio waves all through the air you invisibly make it okay like the moon i can touch you but you pull me just the same and like the crashing of waves all through the ocean i rise and i fall in your name all 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 in your name would you join me in our call to worship how shall we live when we have more than enough? We have no greater praise to offer than caring for your creatures and creation. The earth is our teacher, nurturing and tender. In this hour, O oh God, nourish us in the soil of your love. Let us worship God, the ground of all being. Would you join me in the opening prayer? living word whose love abides in us. You call us to love in truth and action. Give courage to our hearts so we may love your beloveds. Open our ears to the wisdom of those you send who might otherwise be dismissed. Transform our charity into justice all over all the earth, amen. Can we stand as we are able and sing together, What Does the Lord Require? 2174, the faith we sing if you're looking. Um, we will do each section twice and then we'll add on. And as you feel comfortable, join in. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Let us pray. Lord God, good shepherd, by the leading of your spirit, help us to listen for your voice and follow in your paths all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing for the, re for the reading of the gospel from John 10, 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd, 
The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as God knows me and I know God, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, God loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Our second reading comes from the book of 1 John 3, verse 16 to 24. We know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who is the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is the his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good afternoon, Garrett. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts bring you joy, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It was a cold morning in Brooklyn, New York, when a man's voice came booming off the street. Young woman, he said, what are you doing? Did you get your husband's breakfast this morning? Did you straighten up your house? What are you doing running for office? This is something for men. He didn't realize that he was talking to Shirley Chisholm, who refused to let comments like this sway her. In fact, she stayed in conversation with him for so long that he signed the petition for her to get nominated to the state legislature, and she became the second black woman elected to the New York State Legislature. He also didn't realize that four years later, she would be the first black woman elected to Congress. But who can blame him? This is America, it's the 1960s. Not only is Shirley Chisholm black, she's a child of an immigrant, not only does she have an accent, she's also a woman. The bigotry came at her from every angle. She had supporters abandon her because she went too far and because she didn't go far enough. Following her was a commitment to the unexpected and unpredictable. 
Shirley Chisholm shepherded the believers and the doubters in the movement into a new day. But she wasn't always seen that way. All along the way, she had people saying, you are not the leader that we need right now. You're not good for the movement. It's too far out. It's too radical. It's too rabble-rousing. Let us make progress on our own terms. The antagonism she faced came from without and within, as it always tends to do with good shepherds with the kind of prophetic and bold leadership that Jesus calls his followers into. And I'm wondering if Jesus knew people who said things like that, who reached out to him and said, you are going too far too fast. Slow down the progress. You will forfeit the movement. I wonder if he was thinking about these people when he said he was a good shepherd. Because his choice of imagery here is a bit provocative. A.J. Levine is a Jewish scholar whose research focuses on the New Testament. And she notes that in Jesus' context, shepherds were often lowly tradesmen accused of thievery and robbery. They were not the people you want to hang out with. They were not dignified, they didn't smell great, and yet Jesus chooses to describe himself as a good shepherd. Rabble-rousing Jesus, the leader of all from a lowly position. For us here today, the good shepherd imagery is familiar, but for those Jesus was speaking to, for some of them, it might have sounded like an anomaly or maybe even an oxymoron, and I think that Jesus did that on purpose. I don't think he's just talking about the shepherd's relationship to the sheep. He's talking about the nature of shepherding and who we see as a good shepherd. In Jesus' day and still today in Palestine, there are a semi-nomadic people called the Bedouins, and part of their livelihood is in shepherding flocks. Bedouins are often seen as shifty, shady, the kind of shepherds that people would have thought of when Jesus mentioned shepherds. Today, they make up about 10% of the population on the West Bank in Palestine, And the UN says they are the ones who, quote, bear the brunt of the Israeli occupation. Yet they are not the ones people run to to protect. I remember walking around the West Bank a couple of years ago next to the Bedouins. I remember the dust and the distant voices getting closer, the one-sided bartering, the eye rolling, and the tour guide saying, don't listen to them, they're liars. There is always a them, someone outside outside the bounds of what we consider to be inherently good, a them, a them that is outside of that, so outside that we have to caveat it. We have to say, I'm a good one of those. So what does it mean that Jesus chooses to describe himself like a good shepherd? one who finds the whole world as his flock. And if we're supposed to be like Christ, then we're supposed to be like good shepherds too, like Shirley Chisholm, like the Bedouins, who also lay down their lives for their sheep, like every person pushing for the common good, pushing the boundaries of the fold. There are good shepherds all around because God enables God's flock to become good shepherds. But do we see the good shepherds among us when they are here? Jesus is calling all of us to see the whole world as part of God's flock, all of us to become good shepherds to one another in imitation of Christ. It is not a clean or dignified job. You will find yourself dripping in so much vulnerability and authenticity that people you don't expect to follow you will show up and people you don't expect to abandon you will leave all of a sudden. It's a job that calls you to level yourself with the earth and the dirt to get in the midst of it and tend to one another because everyone is in God's flock. 
The flock and the good shepherds are everywhere, but you have to be willing to go beyond the white picket fence, to go beyond the aging stained glass sanctuary walls, to let the church exist without walls or ceilings, to go beyond boundaries of every kind. And just when you think you found the bound of, God, of the good shepherd's flock, go a step further. Ask yourself if the circle is really wide enough because the answer has always been not yet. And there is probably a good shepherd doing good work, being overworked, maybe even villainized for doing that work. Someone who needs you to join in. It is God's resurrecting power that brings you to break down every fence and bound so that all know they are invited in God's flock. And there are still wolves to be aware of, and particularly as seminarians here at Garrett, we are sensitive to those who have been threatened by the wolves. The wolves that have made so many poor and vulnerable and downcast and disinherited. We know there are wolves, especially ones disguised in sheep's clothing. We have witnessed them snarling and foaming and growling and barking. We know that sometimes this gospel feels obvious. Of course, we should be welcoming the downcast and cast aside. Of course, we should bring in the poor and the marginalized. But I wonder if we are also seeing the good shepherds doing the work. I wonder if we are willing to follow people beyond the bound that we have always known. What prophetic voice is among you right now that is a good shepherd that you might be overlooking for whatever reason? Maybe the theor your theory of change is too straight and narrow for you to follow someone who does something differently than the things you would do. Maybe your compass is saying, that line has been crossed, I'm with you here, but not there. That person couldn't possibly be a good shepherd. And I know the old adage, beware the wolf in sheep's clothing, but if all of us truly are in God's flock... Maybe sometimes the sheep has been dressed in wolf's clothing because their pastor taught them to be or because they're part of some political machine conditioning them to be that way. Sometimes the sheep have been raised by wolves because the hired hands have abandoned them. What else do they know to do until someone reaches out to them risking everything and says, you don't have to live like this. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to live with the growling and the foaming and the barking and the snarling. It takes the sheep who trust their good shepherd to go out that way. It takes a sheep who is willing to follow in the way of the rabble-rousing lowly one, the good shepherd who has always been by their side. So the sheep can say, there's nowhere I can go that God is not right there with me so that all may become good shepherds to one another, even in the midst of the dirt and the smell and the disorienting nature of an ever-expanding flock. I wonder what it would look like if we took the call seriously to become good shepherds to all, to see the good shepherd in every other person, to be a good shepherd whose flock is the whole world. Just a few years before Shirley Chisholm was elected to Congress, meanwhile, the Alabama governor, George Wallace, famously spat out, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. He is perhaps the most famous segregationist in the US, and he made a name for himself by promoting white supremacy. A few years after Chisholm was elected, George Wallace was shot. The attempted assassination did not take his life, but landed him in the hospital with life-changing injuries. And when Shirley Chisholm found out about this, she wanted to go visit Wallace in the hospital. And the story goes that her campaign staff said, what does it say about you as a candidate that you will visit George Wallace in the hospital? And she said, what does it say about me as a Christian if I don't? 
And that visit was a catalyst for a long story of George Wallace's repentance of racism, steps towards racial reconciliation, consistent requests for forgiveness, and attempts to repair the harm he had caused. He and Chisholm had been forces against one another for so long, and yet she took her duty as a Christian, as a follower of the Good Shepherd, so seriously that she became a Good Shepherd who brought even Governor George Wallace into her fold. There is nowhere that God does not go with you. There is nowhere you can go that God is not already there. I, I'm mindful that we're nearing the end of the spring semester, and for some of us that means graduation and moving to new places. You might have a new internship or new job or a not yet to be known. There are good shepherds everywhere, and there are sheep looking for good shepherds, even in unexpected places. You just have to be willing to listen and see God in them. And we belong not only to God, but to each other. So go and tell, it's the season of Easter after all, go and tell every person, every crawling and creeping and slithering thing, everything that has breath, that they are part of God's flock. And when they call you names or try to undo you, when they say a busload of gays, of immigrants, of people of color, a busload of whatever they say is coming after them, tell them it's true. We are coming after them with love and justice and compassion and we will not stop. And you may be this not you might not be the shepherd that they expected, but Christ said he's the good shepherd and God said that you are good. You are good. You are a good shepherd too. Become good shepherds even to the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. I have a heart full of questions, quieting all my suggestions. What is the meaning of Christian? In this American life I'm feeling awfully foolish Spending my life on a message I look around and I wonder If ever I heard it right Coming to you cause I'm confused Coming to you cause I feel used Coming to weep while I'm waiting Tell me you won't make me go I need to know there is justice that it will roll in abundance and that you're building a city where we arrive as immigrants and you call us citizens you welcome us as children you were alone and rejected misunderstood and detested you gave it all didn't hold back you even gave up your life how can we call ourselves Christians, saying that love is a tension between the call of the cross and between the old party line? Coming to you for the mothers who are all running for cover. There is a flood from their weeping. Tell me you won't make them go. I need to know there is justice, that it will roll in abundance, and that you're building a city. Where we arrive as immigrants And you call us citizens And you welcome us as children home There is a man with a family He has a wife and a baby He broke the law just to save them Working for three bucks an hour Truly you said we were equal Everyone's heart is deceitful Everyone born is illegal when love is the law of the land Coming to you for the hungry Eating the scraps of this country Didn't you swear you would feed them? Tell me you won't make them go I need to know there's
there's justice, that it will roll in abundance, and that you're building a city where we arrive as immigrants and you call us citizens, you welcome us as children. There is a wolf who is ranting, all of the sheep, they are clapping, promising power and protection, claiming the Christ who was killed. Killed by a common consensus, everyone screaming Barabbas, trading the God for a hero, forfeiting heaven for Rome. Coming to you cause I'm angry, coming to you cause I'm guilty, coming to you cause you've promised to leave the flock for the one. I need to know there's justice, that it will roll in abundance, and that you're building a city where we arrive as immigrants and you call us citizens, welcome us as children. Is there a way to love always, living in enemy hallways? Don't know my foes from my friends and don't know my friends anymore. Power as several prizes, handcuffs can come in all sizes. Love has a million disguises, but winning is simply not one. Good afternoon. We know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Quite a message, to lay down your life for one another. And this one from Jesus. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who, want, and those who lose, their, lose their life for my sake will find it. Okay, ready to sign up? <laughs> Maybe secretly look for the exit door in the back. It is quite a message. And just think of all the opposing messages you receive on a daily basis. Our emails are filled with headlines for self-improvement and products we need. We are inundated with advertisements and advice on social media and, well, everywhere we look. Live your best life. You do you. You can't love others until you love yourself. First, you and I are taking in hundreds of messages per day, but I'm willing to, willing to bet that these are not part of them. These are not at the top of your inbox. Deny yourself today. Learn how to lay down your life for your neighbor. Or six fast proven ways to die to yourself. In 2019, in the middle of worshiping at a conference in a faraway land, kidding, Nashville, I received a clear message from the Holy Spirit. Now, these things don't happen to me often, so when it did, I took note. The clear message was, something has to die in order for something else to grow. Something, something. Okay, so maybe it wasn't that clear. Now that I think about it, it was rather ambiguous. But the way the Spirit imparted those words to me was unmistakably clear and personal. The message was for me, it was for my life, and I knew it was going to be big. The preacher then was speaking about the resurrection of Lazarus and why Jesus would have possibly let his dear friend die in the way that he didn't go when he was first called. He didn't hurry to be there. It wasn't a warm and fuzzy message at all. In fact, it filled me 
with terror and dread. Something has to die? I thought I signed up for life in Christ. I thought I signed up for abundant life. Fast forward two years and I found myself quitting a job that I rather loved for reasons I still can't quite explain to my friends in that church community. Except that now I was enrolling in seminary. <sighs> what I wish I could tell them was I was, you know, God called me to do something bigger and better, right? But I guess I don't really believe that because I was already doing meaningful and important work. What I do believe and know to be true is that God first called me to let something die. I share this because I wonder if you can relate. Many of you are on this alternative path of discipleship, going to seminary at a time when most of our mainline churches are on hospice care. Not exactly a booming field. We are committing our lives to a message of love that people most likely will decline politely, or outwardly reject. Meanwhile, our intended family and friends back home say, I can't wait to see what you become and how you might save the church. Ooh. It's easy to get caught up into thinking that this is some kind of journey of self-discovery and that we are a hero on a hero's journey. journey. You see, too often we center ourselves in this story of God's love. And it's not about us. We have been ingrained to believe that we are each on our own hero's journey, each on our way to deeper self-discovery and enlightenment, that even as Christians, we are each on a relentless path upward in the name of progress, 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 for the sake of the gospel, of course. But do we ever stop? We never stop to consider, what if progress isn't the next best thing? What if bigger and better, instead of bigger and better, we are called to simple and quiet? What if progress in God's eyes looks like death? And that only when that thing is dead and in the ground, only then can the resurrection power of Christ begin to work. Like a seed under the soil, dormant in winter time. I believe we are called to give up this journey for Christ's journey. And what, what is Christ's journey? It is simply a journey of profound love. Friends, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are made in God's image. You and I are created as love bearers. We are children of light meant to mirror the divine relationship of Trinitarian love, full communion, where reciprocal love flows between all creation like a river. We are made for this. We are made for love. This is why the author in 1 John asks, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Refusing to help. A closer translation of the Greek here is to close up one's heart or to shutteth one's bowels. This is an inward reaction, a blocking, a rejection of the Creator's love inside us, meant to be running through us. And we know we do this, right? Because request after request and need after need comes before us daily in this world. And honestly, it's exhausting. I mean, that is to say, it's heartbreaking, is it not? And how much heartbreak can one heart take? I think of the song that Hannah and the team sang for us today, Citizens, which was just stellar, by the way. Thank you. Wow, those lyrics and the way this songwriter cries out prophetically with the need to know there is justice. 
I found myself singing this song all week after Hannah mentioned that she would plan it. Singing along, coming to you, God, for the hungry, for the hurting, for the refugee mothers carrying their babes on their back. Mm. Coming to you, God, for the people of Gaza. Coming to you, God, for the queer and the BIPOC and the women and the children for our full humanity. Coming to you, God, for all those ever turned away from the church. Coming to you, God, to save the earth and the water and our air. Coming to you, God, because we're angry. We are angry that the powerful and those with financial means to save them, to save us, turn aside. They harden their hearts. Oh, coming to you, God, because I feel helpless in these dire situations. And I find myself hardening my heart, too. Coming to you, God, because I know in my innermost being that we are created and called to love in truth and action. All of us. Not in words and speech, not in theories, and not in lip service, but in physical, tangible acts of love that usher us into God's city of love. Because when we don't, our hearts condemn us. And we know this in our bodies. We feel it. It's visceral, the closing off, the hardening of our inner parts. But 1 John reminds us that God is greater than our hearts and knows everything about the complexities of living and loving in this world. For Jesus came teaching us real love, walking in the Spirit, empowering his disciples to receive and then give life-giving, resurrection-based love. Further, 1 John tells us if we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us, that the Spirit will spur us on to good works of love. Richard Rohr says it this way, We don't need to wait for death to experience resurrection. We can begin resurrection today by living connected to God. Resurrection happens every time we love someone, even though they were not very loving to us. And at that moment, we have been brought to new life. Every time we decide to trust and begin again, even after repeated failures, at that moment, we've been resurrected. Every time we refuse to become negative, cynical, hopeless, we have experienced the risen Christ. We don't have to wait for later. Resurrection is always possible now. So back to my new favorite song. It took me a week of singing this song, thinking about the needs that I encounter every day, singing this to God, until I heard God singing it back. God saying, I need to know there is justice. For there is no one else who seeks justice in this land more than I, the Lord your God. Coming to you for the hungry, Along with Jesus' words to the disciples of the 5,000, you, you give them something to eat. Coming to you, my children, for the refugee, welcome the foreigner in your land. Coming to you, my followers, for the hurting, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Feed my sheep. You see, every time we find ourselves in a place of discomfort or of holy anger against injustice or our hearts condemning us to love more deeply, more fully, it is because the Holy Spirit is evoking us. The Spirit is calling us toward the acts of resurrecting love, inviting us to set aside our own agenda, to turn away from self-preservation, to lay down our lives to love and follow Jesus. So we must ask ourselves, what am I willing to sacrifice for the sake of love? What am I clinging to when I simply need to lay it down? Where do I need to roll up my sleeves and get to work as a partner in God's resurrecting love? Not in the name of progress or self-betterment or improvement, but in the name of Jesus, because the world is desperate for a love that lets go of self, 
and puts others first. This kind of love is alive. This kind of love saves us. This love will build the city that God imagines and desires for all of her very own beloved children. Believe, friends, that this love already resides in you by the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ has given to us. Hallelujah. Amen. with us. to God right now. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
With boldness, let us offer our prayers to the shepherd of our souls, saying, God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church in every place. Gather us together and make us one, one in ministry and mission to the world, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Anoint all leaders with your wisdom so that they will use their power to help the poor and defend the vulnerable. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community. Strengthen those who work each day to heal the sick, welcome the outcasts, and help sisters and brothers in need. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for friends and loved ones. Comfort all who are suffering, Walk with them through dark valleys and restore them, body, mind, and soul. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, with the power of your spirit, help us to keep your commandments and to love one another with the love of Jesus, in whose holy name we pray. Amen. Community of saints, beloveds of God, we are invited to come and gather at the table of love and liberation and to feast on the dreams of God, to be nourished by but a taste of what God desires to do among us. Your invitation to come and feast in God's presence is but a taste of the love God extends to us every day. By your very nature, God is always seeking us out, searching for ways to connect us and connect with us. You meet us, God, in the most ordinary of places and you make them sacred. By your grace, we come to recognize the holiness that dwells in the world around us, in our neighbors, and in our own internal depths. If we are honest with ourselves, our hearts condemn us. But God, who knows everything, is greater than our hearts. Amen. And God's deep desire for us is mercy, love, and peace. Therefore, let us confess our sins. Lord, have mercy on us. We talk about love, but our actions betray us. We talk about love, but we neglect the poor. We talk about love, but we fail to love one another. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us and imbibe in us by the power of your spirit so that our lives may show our love for Christ in whose body we live and whose name we pray. Amen. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. I need you to say that thanks be to God with a little more oomph. All right. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. I'm going to miss you. Oh, I'm going to miss you too. <laughs> I'm so glad.
Lift up your hearts and your bodies as you are able. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. Mm. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from bondage to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit by your great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of despair and into marvelous promises. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offerings for us as we proclaim the mystery of death. Of Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be the, for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer in the language that is closest to our hearts. Amen. Body of Christ, broken for us. Thanks be to God. The cup of the new covenant that makes us new in Christ. Spirit 
light of the living God fall afresh on me, my God, my God. Let us offer together the prayer of thanksgiving. God, we give you thanks for this meal that nourishes us, body and soul. May it sustain us as we confront evil that keeps us from living the lives you intended for us and for all your creatures and creations until every life can be lived abundantly be our guide, be our hope, be our comforter. Amen. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God our creator children of
Now go in peace and bless the world, and remember, you go nowhere by accident. Where you are going, God is sending you, and where you are, God has placed you. God has a purpose for your life right where you are. Christ Jesus, who indwells you, has something he wants to do in you and through you, right where you are. Believe this and go in his love and in his grace and in his power in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray so God can use me. Come on, y'all. Anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray so God can use me. Anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach so God can use me. Well, oh, hallelujah, anytime I'm going to preach so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime I'm going to study, I'm going to study so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime Hallelujah, I'm going to study so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep so God can use me. Hallelujah. Anywhere, Lord. I'm not good at it anytime, but I'm going to sleep so. I'm going to sleep so God can use me anywhere, Lord. Let's go out of here on this one. I'm going to live on. I'm going to live so. Come on, y'all. God can use me anywhere. Anywhere, Lord. Anytime. I'm going to live so. I'm going to live so. God can use me. God can use me. Anywhere, Lord. Anytime. Hallelujah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Oh my God, that, cit that, that citizen. So many things were happening. I had to stop and get my old fashioned electric pencil and take notes. Like, it's like so many things.